everybody. Amen. We just want to give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Uh, this vision has spoken. That's all I can say. Though it tarries, you will have to wait for it. And we want to thank God. This vision has spoken. And you people of God stood waiting and standing in faith and walking. And now we can see the manifestation of this vision. We really want to give God all the glory and honor and the praise. Without wasting any time, I want to bring back the mic to Dr. Lucas because he has the word for us. Praise God. This is my wife, Dorothy. She forgot to introduce herself. <laughs> we are so excited and we want to bring greetings from North Carolina. And we really, really wanted to have a whole crew over here to celebrate with you. But it has pleased the Lord for us to be with you tonight. And we are excited. I will let, I let my wife pray, and I will share with you what the Lord has laid in my heart. Father God, we want to return to you all the glory and honor and praise. We thank you, God, for giving us this opportunity to be here and witness what you have done. For sure, this is Ebenezer, and we want to give you glory and honor and praise. And at this time, God... I just want to bring Lucas unto your hand. Lord, I pray that you will speak through him in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for your presence to be so mighty in this place in Jesus' name. I pray that you will minister through him in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that the word that is going to come forth, Lord, is going to come from you and let it, be a, let it bear fruit. Thank you, God, for this moment, and thank you that you are here, and thank you, God, that you are going to speak. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I am Lucas, as Pastor Joshua said. Um, originally, I am from Tanzania, for those who it's their first time to see me <laughs> and I love the Lord and I am your brother in North Carolina I am the single church branch of I family in North Carolina <laughs> and um, so many things have been said about Pastor Joshua and our sister Margaret. I had an opportunity to know them since when we were in Tanzania as young fellows. I think we are still young. <laughs> but uh, Brother Josh, Pastor Joshua told me that I needed to share the word of God. And when I came, I was asking him, when am I supposed to share the word of God? And he took me, he said, yeah, I have to speak the word of God right now, and I'm ready. Are you ready to receive the word of God? Are you ready? All right, let's talk. I don't know uh, about you, but I personally am excited. And... Um, there are a few things that make me excited. One of the things that make me excited is to see an idea or a dream take all its course up till when it becomes a reality. To me, that is exciting. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight, if you allow me. I want to talk about God's view of you. What is God's perspective when he looks at us? We are in the mood of celebration. 
And I want to remain in that mood of thanking God and celebrating the great achievements which have been accomplished here in the name of the Lord. Now, one person told me this. He said, this is how you know who are good friends. Good friends will cry with you when you're crying. When you are mourning, they will come and mourn with you. When you're going through rough times, they will come and go through rough times with you. They will pray with you. They will encourage you. They will say, keep on going. Keep on keeping on. They will tell you, don't give up. A day is coming when you're going to be celebrating. And when that day comes, these very people will be there with you doing what? Celebrating with you. They will be happy for your success. Now, people who celebrate your success and your achievements... People who are happy because you're happy. Those are good friends. But there are people who, when you are successful, they are not happy. When you're going through rough times, when you are failing in one way or the other, they are celebrating. Do you know those kinds of people in your life? Do you have those kinds of people in your life? Now, it's human nature. And the Bible says, celebrate with those who are what? Celebrating. That's why we're here. And when you guys are going through exercising faith eh? we tried to be here with you we just tried <laughs> when you guys are contributing a lot of money to buy this building I know it's not easy because we went through what you guys have just gone through I know when the realtors tell you that they cannot take your offer when the banks say you do not have enough credit. When you look and you can tell for sure that it is not possible, humanly speaking. But tonight I want to tell you this. Have God's view on everything which you are or which God has laid in your heart. There are certain things that are not coming from human beings. How are you going to know that an idea comes from you or it comes from God? The first thing, when the idea comes in your heart, the first thing is you going to say what? This is just too big. I cannot do this. Once that becomes your first response you should know i want to tell you that is god's idea because god's idea are so big they will blow you off god wants to prove to you it's not by your strength it is not by your might but it is by his spirit you're going to go through it you're going to accomplish it now let me go very quickly i know I have very short time. Let me go very quickly. Many people normally ask this question. I think it is a question which is as old as the earth itself is old. How or why are some people successful in what they're doing? And why are some people 
not successful in what they're doing. Is it a relevant thing to talk tonight? Or we just need to be talking about chicken and eating and celebrating? <laughs> Let's talk about that. I want to challenge us. Let's look and let's ask ourselves why we are all trusting the same God. We are all believing in the same way. But there are some, once they put their hands in doing something, they get successful. And some of us, we struggle a lot. We struggle a lot. We bleed a lot. Sometimes we ask God, have you forgotten us? I want to take you back to the Bible and answer that question by a story which is recorded in the book of Genesis. And many scholars have used this story in a negative way. But I want us to look at this story in a positive way. Probably, probably, it will help us one day. This is a story after the floods of Noah. The Bible says people increased. That is in Genesis, Genesis chapter 11 for those who are writing down. The Bible says people increased and they started moving eastward. And some scholars say that there were about 500 families and they saw a very nice plain. It's called the plain of Shinar. It was a beautiful fertile land and they settled there. And when they settled there, they say to themselves, Why shouldn't we just build a city here and put a tower on this city? Because by then they had increased in numbers. And the Bible says they all spoke one language and they all understood. I was reading and trying to research. Some scholars say that they had very few vocabulary. And everything one person said, the other person will understand perfectly. They had one language. They understood each other. And then in their hearts they said, let us build a what? A city. And in that city... Let's put a tower. And why should we do that? To have a name for ourselves. And also, that we should not scatter around the surface of the earth. That was their reason. The reason was not. The reason was what? Not to do what? Not to scatter around in the surface of the earth. And yes, so, they said, we're going to build a tower, and this tower is going to reach heavens. That's what the Bible says. That's what they said. We're going to put up a city, and in the city we're going to put up a tower. And on this tower, this tower will go so high, and it will reach heaven. So that when people scatter around, they will see the tower, they will come back. They will not go very far. And the Bible says, God looked down and he asked himself, what are these guys doing? Huh? That is the part which I like. Huh? God said what? God, the Bible says, God looked down to see what people were doing. And he saw these guys busy building a tower and the bible says god descended he came down and visited the project 
to look at what was going on. And when God was looking and visiting to see what was going on, he was examining and checking the desires, not only the desires of the heart, but also God was checking on the intentions of the heart. He was examining what's going on. And then he went back to heaven and said this statement. And I want you and me to read these statements together. And if you can remember one thing tonight, remember this statement which God said about human beings when they put their hands and their hearts into doing something. Let's read Genesis 11, chapter 11, verse number 6. Genesis 11 verse 6 if you can write it down the Lord said look they are one people with the same language for all of them and this is only the beginning of what they will do nothing that they have in their mind to do will be impossible for them. Praise God. What is God saying here? He is saying nothing which these people have desired, they have put their mind to do, will be what? Impossible. These people are what? They are unstoppable. You cannot stop them. They have put their mind into doing something. You can't stop them. And then God said, when you go to verse 7 and 8, we all know the story. Then God said what? God said, we need to do something. We need to go down there and frustrate their project. <laughs> we need to go down there and do what? And dismantle what they're doing. And the Bible says, the Lord descended and confused their language. So the Kikuyu will never understand what Eluya was saying. And the Kiriyama will never understand what Etaita was saying. And probably they will not all of them understand Swahili because some of them are from Nigeria. And some of them were very far. They spoke English. And we could not understand at all. So what happened when the confusion happened? These guys could not continue with the project. And the Bible says they scattered everywhere. And the project stopped. You might think it is a negative story. There are some few things I want us to learn tonight. Lesson number one, which I want us to learn. Lesson number one. To be successful in any project, in anything, Ingredient number one is human ambition. These guys were ambitious. These guys had a dream. And verse 3 and verse 4 tells us of the dream. It tells us of the ambition. It says, let us. Huh? These guys collected themselves collectively and they say let us build a city let us put a tower in the city you do you know by then they did not have something like they didn't have skyscrapers that was the first 
skyscraper recorded. Nobody else had built something like that. These guys had so big of a dream, they imitated God in the attribute of creativity. They had never seen this before. They imagined of something which is never there. And they said, let us do this. They dreamt big. I want to challenge Imani Church. This building is not enough for what God wants you to do. This is not enough at all. It's not even a fraction of what God wants to achieve through you. The biggest problem of us, if you allow me to say, especially us of African descent, we don't dream big enough. We don't dream big enough. It's so easy for us to be satisfied with a small achievement. Once we get that small achievement, once we get that small recognition, once we achieved that, we become complacent. We forget. We start enjoying the blessings. We forget that we serve a big God. God's vision, God's dream to us are to take the whole city of Des Moines. It's not only this small one little place. This is the beginning. That's what the Bible says. This is just the beginning. It means there is something wrong with us. Today, we don't, we don't dream enough. I believe, if you allow me, I believe the Holy Spirit is going around grieving people of God are not dreaming big enough to put God to work. Am I speaking to somebody? You are a bad audience. You're not giving me the, the, the feedback. I know I'm a good preacher. I know. <laughs> Just relax. Just relax. I'm not going to skin anybody. When I see you, it is a night of celebration. At the end, we will all celebrate. But there are things we need to put right. Number one, we have said to become successful. To make God come down and visit us. We need to dream so big. We need to do what? To dream so big. And the difference between a dream and a vision is that a, a vision has teeth. Do you know that? A vision has teeth. It bites. You know what that means? A dream is what you just think and think and think and you have an idea. You have an idea and you tell people about your idea. You tell everybody you have an idea. That's a dream. But when you take your dream and you put it on paper and you call in an architect and they come and they ask you questions and you start drawing and then you call a quantity surveyor and they give you the price. And then you call an electrician and they tell you the wires need to go this way. And then you call a plumber and the plumber says the pipes need to go that way. And they put that on paper. And you have a project proposal. It's no longer a dream. Now it's a vision. Now it has teeth. 
when we ask you you will say this is my project proposal this is what I want to do and in five years this is where I want to be and this is how much money I want this is a kind of qualifications I need that is now a what it's a vision it's a vision it's not a dream anymore but we start with what we start with a dream start with a dream we dream but there are people amongst us probably I'm one of them we just dream and dream and dream we never wake up from our sleep we just dream for you to make to make things move for you to see God visiting your plans put that dream into a paper start making that dream to become a vision I promise you my sister you will see doors that you had never known before people will come and say oh you need this I have a brother who does this he can help you because now it is on paper it's no longer a dream let's move on I've been given only five minutes is it five minutes <laughs> Point number two. Purpose. I will call it purpose compliance. Purpose compliance. These guys who were building a tower. They didn't have. It is not what they did. It is why they did. Which was wrong. Because today, we see buildings very high. And God is happy. Is that right? <laughs> we see a lot of buildings, tall buildings downtown. And God is happy. But then, there to them, there was something wrong. The intentions of their heart. Once your vision and your dream is in compliance with God's will, you are okay with God. Because God told Adam, he told Adam, go multiply and do what? And fill the surface of the earth. That was God's direct commandment. Go do what? Scatter. These guys say, we're going to build a tower that we do not do what? We do not scatter. So you can see the intentions of a good thing already makes the whole project not acceptable before God. Because the intention was not in line with God's perfect will at their time. So I want to encourage you, my brother and my sister. If you're planning a project, a business, whatever you're planning as a family, whatever you're planning as an individual, whatever you're planning as a church, whatever you're planning to do, slow down. Ask yourself, does it contradict God's will? Am I in compliance with God's perfect will? If you are, go ahead. Do it. If you are not, you know what's going to happen. He will come down. And that's my point. That's the point number three. We call point number three God's or divine visitation. I love that part. In heaven, I can imagine God is asking himself these people are busy what are they doing they are so busy these guys are bringing in bricks these guys are burning these bricks in the, in the furnace these guys are carrying these bricks and they are so busy like bees 
in one accord, in one purpose, it makes heavens wonder what's going on. <laughs> Somebody said, when men are busy, heavens look. It is true. When you are so busy doing something, always God will visit you to see what exactly are you doing. You better be found doing something right. <laughs> you better be found doing something what? Something right or something good. Now, what happens on the day of visitation? My assumption is, in anything you're doing, if it is a family project, if it is your own project, is in the middle of the night you're doing it you're not sleeping when everybody is enjoying themselves you're busy doing what you're doing you are learning you are practicing you are trying you are searching if it is a student you are learning everybody else is sleeping but you are studying if you are a professor when everybody else is going to sleep, you are in the lab doing research. You are busy doing something. Whatever you're doing, if you're at home, you're busy as a mom doing something. There is a time, there is a day in the calendar of God. God is going to say, what is she doing? Hallelujah. There is a day, my brother. I want to promise you. There is a day. God himself. He will come down. And say, let me check it out. Let me look what this person is doing. Hallelujah. That is when you, the things you have been struggling with for five years. All of a sudden, they just happen. That is the time that things you are wondering and you could not figure it out. That is a day in a flash of a second. You have a visitation. God himself has come down and visited you. And he will say, okay, this is now the time of refreshment. This is now the time to sing songs of celebration. This is now the time to say our God is a great God. A day of visitation. If you read in the Bible, you will see so many places. It's documented. It is called a day of visitation. I want to encourage you men of God and women of God. There is a day of visitation. And today is one of those days. A day of visitation. Hallelujah. God has visited us in a special way. Like in the children of Israel, Moses was born. And there was a day Pharaoh had to let the people go. What are you struggling with? What keeps you busy? What is the thing you have asked God day in and day out? I want to promise you, don't give up. Don't give up on your ministry. Don't give up on what you're doing. If it is at work, don't give up. Keep on doing the good things. There is a day God is going to visit you at work. You will be surprised, I promise you. And everybody will say, surely, she or he is the child of God. Because things will happen and everybody say, this is the doing of God. And it is marvelous in our sight. Praise God. Let me finish with point number four. Realization of God's
divine potential. Thank you. I was told I was cold, but I'm sweating. That's what I was told. Iowa is what? Cold. It's not. <laughs> I want to finish by saying the way God looks at us so many times is different from the way people look at us. From the way members of your family look at you. Or your colleagues at work look at you. Or your business competitors look at you. It's completely different. God's view of you is you are unstoppable that is how God sees you in fact when I was looking at this scripture again it took God to stop men it means the devil cannot stop you it means men whatever they do to stop you they cannot stop you you allow them to stop you God could have sent an earthquake and the whole thing could have come down but God said these guys the way I know them the way I've created them they will start again he could have sent another flood but God said these guys these guys the potential I have put in them even the flood cannot stop them. If he decides to do this thing, he will do it. I need to come down and confuse him myself. <laughs> That's what God said. I need personally to go down and confuse him. Otherwise, he cannot be stopped. That is who you are. That is how God sees you. That is how God created us. We are what? Unstoppable. Tell your neighbor, I am unstoppable. You cannot stop me. Hallelujah. Once we decide to do something and we are created in the image of God, and we Christians, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Whoa! Once we say we want a compass, what happens? We got a compass. <laughs> now I want now I want Imani Church to sit down again. I want the leaders. I want the church members, everybody to have their next business meeting and said, we have already built the city. Now we need to build a tower. <laughs> I want you to have a dream when you email us, when you tell us of what you want to do, we will pick up the phone and say, are you guys dreaming or is this real? That is what we want people to respond. If there is God here, if there is God here on our side, this place is not enough. Praise God. In fact, just the first night we have filled it up. We have already filled it up. This is the first night. This is not big enough. It's not. Believe me. We need another balcony. We need to go up, up, up. And then we need to be buying every church which closes in town. Every church which closes in town. We buy it. 
Hallelujah. We take it. We want to say every church in town which closes down, they should consult us. Do you want an extension compass? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We need to have these branches, branches everywhere, everywhere in Timor. Then we start going to neighboring churches, neighboring cities, until when Iowa is not enough for I church. Now we start going to other states. That is what is supposed to happen. When I see you, I'm dreaming. <laughs> Hallelujah. God said, this is the beginning. It is the beginning. You cannot be stopped. Unless God himself comes down to confuse you. If it is not God, you're not going to be stopped by anybody. No power of hell, no demon, no human being. Nothing can stop you. You are unstoppable. Hallelujah. We are unstoppable. Everybody say, we are unstoppable. We are unstoppable. Hallelujah. We are unstoppable. We don't stop until God himself says that we need to stop. Hallelujah. 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 Let everybody stand. Let everybody stand. We are unstoppable. We are what? Unstoppable. Go back home. Tell your children. We are unstoppable. Tell your children. Nothing can stop us. We are the children of a living God. When we put our hands in doing something. Nobody can stop us. And we dream big. We don't dream chicken dreams. We dream ego dreams. Big dreams. Hallelujah. 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 Let us pray together. And let's tell God. Thank you. Because you have made us unstoppable. Let us all pray. Father. In the name of Jesus. We want to thank you. Because you have made us so father. Created us. In your image. We are unstoppable. That is what you said about us. So oh God. Help us. To see ourselves. That way. Nothing can stop us. When you are on our side. Oh God. We are more than conquerors. When, oh God, you stand with us, nothing which is formed against us will be able to prevail. Father God, you say that no tongue that raises itself against us will be able to prevail. But we will condemn it. Thank you, Jesus, for the power you have put in us. Thank you, Father, for the potential that is in us, oh God. You made us unstoppable. Give us that revelation. Let it, oh God, go so deep in our heart that it will make us to wake up at night and do what you've called us to do. It will make us to wake up in the morning with excitement, oh Father, that nothing will be able to stop us. I want to pray for Imani Church and its leadership, oh Father, that, oh God, this will be the beginning. We pray, oh Father, they will break forth to the east and to the south, to the north and to the an old direction of oh father you will oh god break forth with them and make them conquer the land father god i pray for the anointing of unity i pray for the anointing oh god of being in one accord i pray in the name of jesus that god you will make them one people speaking the same language oh God understanding each other 
and taking authority over the things you have put under their feet. Thank you, Jesus, because you're going to do it. It all starts when we say yes to Jesus. It all starts when we say, Jesus, I am a sinner. Come into my heart. Change me. And make me what you want me to become. Remember, Jesus died for your sin. Jesus is on your side. He's not against you. He is the one who died for you. He is the one who loved you when you are still a sinner. He died for you. I want to invite you to make you true, unstoppable. Even when you die, and you are at the gates of heaven nothing will stop you because you have Jesus in your heart to become a true unstoppable person you need to have Jesus in your heart because otherwise the gate who is Jesus himself will stop you if you don't know him I want to invite you if you are here and you say my brother I have thought, I've been told about becoming a Christian, about becoming born again for a long time. But I think tonight is the right night. I want to invite you to come and we're going to pray with you. Everything else will stop. All the program will stop because of you. We will pray for you. And I promise you, it's going to be different. This night is recorded in heaven that one person, one person that is you, have given your life to him. Thank you, my sister. Come forward. If there is any other person who wants to join her, let's clap our hands for her. This is the greatest decision you can ever make. The greatest decision you can ever make is to be right with God. I want to invite you. If you're here, don't be afraid. We don't eat people. We will celebrate with you. We will say with you, this is the day the angels in heaven will celebrate because of the decision you're going to make tonight. Make this night your night. It's a night of difference. You become a true and superb person. If there is any other person, please just walk forward. We will take a few minutes to pray with you. Just come forward. Don't be afraid. If you are here, just come forward. We will pray with you. Anybody? Amen. Now, wherever you are, Thank you, my brother. And you decided to bring her here. Good job. Good job. Congratulations. Congratulations. Anybody? Another one here. God bless you. God bless you. You made a right decision. Children will be in front of us in heaven. They will go. Jesus said, if you don't believe like these kids, the kingdom of heaven will be difficult. If you are here, the children have shown us what to do. We're still waiting for you. One more chance. Still waiting for you. Come, 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 come. If you are here, this is a night of celebration. Just come and we will celebrate with you. I want us to close our eyes and put one hand on our heart and follow me in this prayer. Close your eyes, put one hand in your heart 
and say with me let's pray this kind of a prayer dear Jesus I love you I am a sinner and I'm coming to the cross and I believe in you with all my heart that you are the Savior now I want to repent of my sins I will not do them again I open my heart enter in my heart oh Jesus forgive me of my sin stay in my heart and be my savior take away my name from the book of judgment and write my name in the book of life now and onwards I want to walk with you teach me your ways help me to please you now and forevermore thank you for the great salvation thank you for dying for me now I am a free person in Jesus name Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You can go back to sit. God bless you and you are now born again.